Visiting Sterling was always a dream of mine. I have a lot of family history here that goes back hundreds of years. I even found the little apartment where my granny lived as a child. Nowadays, it's above a cozy coffee shop. Justin and I had devoted one full day to experiencing Stirling on our two-week road trip of Scotland. There was only one problem. And I mean, it's Scotland after all, so it's a common problem. It was pouring rain and didn't appear to be letting up. So it's raining, it's cold, it's damp, but we only have one day in Stirling, so we really just have to walk around and make the most of it. After warming up in a cafe, we set out to explore. The number one thing to do in Stirling is visit Stirling Castle. It sits high on a hilltop overlooking the town. Justin and I started walking uphill towards the castle. One of my reasons for visiting Scotland at this time was because my grandpa had recently passed away. My grandparents immigrated to Canada decades earlier, but they used to spend half the year in Stirling after they retired for many years. My grandpa used to go on daily walks up to Stirling Castle, most likely walking the same route. I thought about him a lot during my time in Stirling. Stirling Castle is undoubtedly one of the most famous tourist attractions in the entire region. You can explore the interior and exterior of the castle, as well as the property and the gardens. It's really interesting to walk around the top of the fortified walls of the castle, taking some time to admire the architecture, the carvings, and the statues. There are many rooms inside the Royal Palace where you can transport yourself back in time to the lavish daily lives of royalty in the 1500s. The Great Hall is the largest banquet hall of its kind in Scotland, completed in 1503 for James IV. It was used for parties, feasts, and dances. There are two tall throne chairs for the King and the Queen, and we couldn't resist sitting in them. The views of Stirling from the top of Stirling Castle are among the best in the city. You can catch glimpses of the entire city, as well as the cemetery below, which happens to be the final resting place for many of my family members who have since passed. Since the Wallace Monument was closed during our visit, we found another place to explore during our time in Stirling. Campus Kenneth Abbey is a fascinating historic site featuring the ruins of an old abbey as well as a graveyard. The abbey was founded in 1140 by King David I to serve Stirling Castle. Its surviving bell tower is an amazing example of architecture from the 1200s. You can wander inside the bell tower too. It's a unique spot and I didn't see any others like it during our time in Scotland. There are plaques noting where former structures used to be as much of the abbey fell into ruin in the 1500s. And even though it rained all day long, we were treated to a spectacular rainbow that stretched across the sky from one end of the horizon to the other. It's always a good idea to make the most of your day, even in bad weather, and you might even be rewarded with a beautiful sight at the end of it all. We love Sterling and can't wait to return again and again.